So how much protein do you need to eat to build muscle? Within this video, I'm going to give you some information from some very visible people within the industry, and I'm going to discuss the correct way to look at this question. Now, call me a conspiracy theorist, but there seems to be an overinflation of how much protein you need to eat within mainstream fitness. Now, one reason for this may be by overemphasizing how much protein you need to eat. You may struggle to get it from food sources and therefore have to spend more money on supplements. You guys just haven't looked into it. That's no, all it is. You're saying, saying, damn, when you look into it, I'm saying we don't know what the Wrong. But wait a minute, Eddie. You, That's this what I'm Japanese we don't know satellite. This Japanese Look satellite. And Morton et al. undertook a meta-analysis of research into protein intake. And essentially, they found that protein intake greater than 1.6 grams per kilogram did not continue to be effective in resistance training induced gains in relation to muscle mass. Uh, and converted to pounds, this would be 0 0.7 grams per pound of body weight. And so the correct way to take research such as this is not as a definitive number, but what this meta-analysis shows us and kickstarts within our thinking is that perhaps numbers are overinflated. And so that is what I want to look at. And so here is a range of numbers given for a 200 pound man. Now these are the upper ranges suggested by these different people. First of all, I'm gonna start with Dr. Jim Stepani, very visible in the fitness industry, PhD, all over YouTube with nut nutritional advice. Now he has quite a high number and essentially, although he does vary, he says that 1.5 grams of protein per pound of body weight for muscle mass and he even goes as far as saying up to two grams per pound of body weight and this is what it would look like and so and essentially his argument is that the more protein the better in terms of building muscle and then Omar Isav who has the number one ranked video on YouTube on this subject and he cites Alan Aragon of course his approach is to look at research and he says one gram of protein per pound of body weight and he says that actually he takes around 1.25 to 1.5 grams per pound of body weight for himself. And he gives some really important points within his video. And he says that, you know, if you're eating good amount of protein each day, not every meal has to have the highest quality protein within it. And so essentially he's saying that you don't have to obsess with the amount and quality of protein within every meal, as long as you are getting it accumulatively over a period of time. And then we have Mike Dolce, who is a uh, nutritionist specifically with elite MMA fighters. Essentially, he doesn't really give specific numbers. His whole approach is about eating quality nutrients and he focuses on the quality of food sources. But I did manage to track down some specific numbers in a quote he gave. And he said that a range of 0 0.8 to 1.2 grams of protein. And then we have Eric Helms, who again, very popular within the fitness industry. And he gives a nice range as well of 0 0.8 grams to 1.3 grams of protein per pound of body weight. Now, this is what it looks like at 0 0.8 grams. And here is what it looks like at 1.3 grams. And some important points that he gives again is to not obsess over a few grams here and there. And he states that the amount of protein you need is not as much as people are led to believe to increase muscle mass. And in fact, when maintaining or gaining, he usually has his clients on the lower side of the range, 0 0.8 to 1 grams of protein per pound of body weight. And so this is the problem for somebody looking into this. You're going to get so many different numbers and ranges. You're going to get some very popular people giving you very high ranges of how much protein you should take. And so here is the correct way to look at it. And as with most questions such as this, you have to think of yourself on the continuum. How much protein you take depends very heavily on your specific characteristics. And here are some of the characteristics that, that matter. The first is your training experience and how intense your training is. Now by intensity, that can be many things. If you're training volume, that could be reps and sets. If you're lifting heavy, that could be that could be how many lifts you're doing. Are you doing five reps, three reps? It can be training frequency. How many times are you training over a week? The more you are breaking down that muscle, 
and signaling for protein synthesis. Tomorrow's video is about protein synthesis where I explain this process. The more you're going to have to intake protein to deal with the stimulus that you are creating. In addition, the harder you're training, the more frequency, etc., the more caloric burn there will be because you want the rate of protein synthesis to exceed those catabolic stimulus. And I will explain this in tomorrow's video. And you want to maintain this positive nitrogen balance. Essentially, is your body retaining enough uh, nitrogen? Is the nitrogen intake exceeding the nitrogen output? And if you are, then you're in this positive nitrogen balance, which is an anabolic state, which is compatible with muscle growth. And so you need to understand it's very hard hard to give an exact answer because it depends on your training, your eating protocols, your body fat percentage, for example. I am quite lean at the moment, around about 11% body fat. So I'm at this point of adaptive thermogenesis where my body is being selfish and it doesn't want me to lose any more fat. And so I believe that I have to manipulate my carbohydrate intake as I'm in caloric deficit. I'm going to decrease my carbohydrates and therefore I need to increase another macronutrient to, to meet my cal calorie goals. And so I will actually increase my protein at the moment. And so that's another example of how it has to be customized to your specific state. And so connected to this is what, what are your goals and your training state. For example, if you're looking to build muscle mass, that's different to the maintenance of muscle mass in terms of protein intake. And again, are you an elite athlete? Are you training four hours a day, five days, six days a week? Are you a gym rat training intensively five, six days a week? Or are you just somebody training a few times a week for overall health? Do you do intense resistance training? Do you just do uh, infrequent resistance training and you're mo mostly focused on some sort of cardio in endurance activity for, you know, there are so many possibilities here but certainly the higher up that spectrum you are the further up the spectrum towards elite athlete or intense trainer the more protein that you would intake to compensate for that breakdown of muscle mass that you are initiating and Eric Helms has some research from 2003 where he looked at athletes and he concluded that athletes do need this higher protein intake and then another factor will be are you natural or chemically enhanced I don't think this really needs much explanation the more chemically enhanced you are of course you still need to intake adequate protein but is it uh, in the scheme of what you're taking, is it is it the, the vital factor in terms of the anabolic response of your body? Most likely not. And then for me, really the key variable, which is your eating protocol. Now, there are so many possible combinations of eating and this will affect how much protein you take. For example, you may be on some sort of high fat diet where you're taking in a lot of calories from fat and therefore you may actually need to eat a moderate amount of protein still within muscle building range but a moderate amount of protein because you still need to meet your caloric goals if you are carb cycling the days you are low carb maybe you'll have to intake more protein to, to match your overall protein goal and the days where you are high carb then that protein level may drop so you know, you have to be flexible and it is customized. How much protein you intake will directly relate to what eating protocol you are using and your other macronutrients in relation to your overall calorie count for the method you are using. Now, whether that's bulking, whether you're cutting and maintaining muscle mass, whether you're doing some sort of lean bulk, your protein intake would, would adjust to your overall cal caloric target. But another reason that a fairly decent amount of protein is beneficial is because of the thermic effect of food. When you eat food, you are burning calories through the, the processing and digestion of the, of that macronutrient. And actually protein has a higher thermic effect than carbohydrates and fats as high as 30% of the calories 
from protein that you intake are burnt up during this process. What's important to note here is the protein intake is scaled upwards with severity of caloric restriction and leanness. The higher the body fat percentage, the lower the protein intake can usually be compared to total body weight. By eating adequate amounts of proteins, eating quality proteins, all essential amino acids, complete proteins, I'll touch on this in tomorrow's video, to make sure that you are intaking quality and adequate amounts of protein which is broken down into amino acids which are then chained together again for use within the body and if you're training intensively several times a week hard resistance training you're creating the need and stimulus for protein synthesis you need to make sure you're taking an adequate protein but I think the takeaway here is that numbers most certainly are inflated and, and that using a range can be very important and that you must put yourself onto that continuum and be honest with yourself and if you do that then it's not necessary to be pounding protein shakes all through the day now personally I like Eric Helms's range that sort of 0.8 to 1.3 grams per pound of body weight. Uh, and the leaner you get, the more you might want to increase the protein as you drop and manipulate other macronutrients. As with other aspects of fitness, such as cardio, for example, it is better to look at your physical fitness more chronically over more time. If you're looking at your protein intake over a, f a few hours in a day, that's very different than looking at protein intake over 12 hours, over three days, over one week. Don't panic if you've not had protein within a certain amount of time around your training session. As long as you are taking in adequate amounts of protein cumulatively over a set period of time, then you are going to give your body those amino acids to be rechained into protein. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing and I'll see you soon.